But in the same exam, I had four or five of my friends who had failed in four or five subjects and they were moving around the campus peacefully, blissfully, as if nothing happened, blessing others and saying, Kyo tension lete ho, dekho. So I asked them, Ki, tum log to bade besharam lag rahe. Ki, yaar, itna fail ho ke bhi aram se ghum Sharam nahi aati. Philosophy kya hai tumhara? To bale, apna philosophy simple hai. College mein ghusna, apna kaam hai, nikalna college ka kaam hai. So what's the difference between success and happiness? Success is to get what you like and happiness is to like what you get. And that's a huge difference. Therefore, the three big challenges which we are facing in this age is comparing, complaining and criticizing are the three cancers of the mind. We will experience circumstances in life where we have the skill to fight, but we will lose the will to fight. And the Gita has been spoken to give all of us the will to fight because all of us will experience situations in life where we will become helpless. But the Gita is saying you may become helpless in life, but never become hopeless. Namaskar and welcome to all of you for this session on the art of habits. So many people, they ask me that you are in uh, IIT before and suddenly everything changed. How did you land up in this situation? So I tell them that yes, I was also studying and as part of my education, when I was in my third year, I also had an experience which created some transformation in the way I would think and my narratives changed. So one of my friends, he tried to commit suicide and you know mental health is a big challenge, big issue. So many people are becoming hopeless. But when he tried to commit suicide and we approached him and asked him, why did you try to commit suicide? He said, that in every exam I would get the gold medal, but in this exam I got the silver medal and I could not handle it. So we looked at him and said, what? People are dying to get into IIT and you are inside IIT trying to die. Doesn't make sense. But it was a fact for him because we all create world of our own within our mind. But in the same exam, I had four or five of my friends who had failed in four or five subjects and they were moving around the campus peacefully, blissfully, as if nothing happened, blessing others and saying, Kyo tension lete ho? Humko dekho. So I asked them, Ki, Are, tum log to bade besharam lag rahe ho? Ki, yaar, itna fail ho ke bhi aram se ghum rahe sharam nahi aati. Philosophy kya hai tumhara? To bule, apna philosophy simple hai. College mein ghusna, apna kaam hai, nikalna college ka kaam hai. So the self-confidence with which they spoke, it shook me. And it made me realize that actually, the education system is teaching us how to be successful. But the education system is not teaching us how to be happy. So what's the difference between success and happiness? Success is to get what you like and happiness is to like what you get. And that's a huge difference. And therefore, dear friends, that was a moment where I thought, let me explore into understanding the mystery of happiness because ultimately people indulge in habits to have an experience of happiness and pleasure and joy. Habits means that which repeats itself. When I put my finger in a fire and it burns and pains me, I never develop a habit of putting my hand in the fire again and again because nobody wants to repeat episodes of pain. People only want to repeat episodes of what they consider and experience as pleasure. So the foundational principle for habit is search for pleasure. And therefore, it's very interesting that 
Patanjali defines habit as the memory of previous experience of pleasure. I repeat, the memory of a previous experience of pleasure is what is known as habit. When we remember a previous experience of pleasure we got by doing something, that memory urges us, pushes us to repeat that activity again. And therefore, when we are speaking about the art of habits, I would like to share with you four main principles we need to keep in mind. While getting control over our habits, while getting control over how you make your choices, the first is focus. A major cause of distraction is we are not focused on what we want. We do not have our own identity in place. We do not have our priorities in place. We just get distracted by anything and everything. The whole advertisement industry is trying to bombard. Do this, buy this, take this. Puri dunia aapke peechhe lagi aur aap sab yaha waha bhatak rahe ho. Train mein koi ek pankha bech raha tha. Haath ka pankha. Aur keh raha tha, pankha le lo, pankha le lo. Unbreakable lifetime warranty. Chara ne ki. So somebody became very excited. Ola chara na le bhai. De de pankha. Pankha le liya. Jaisi pankha chala ya pankha tut gaya. Pankha tut gaya to gussa ho gaya. Arre, tu abne ka lifetime warranty. Lifetime warranty hai to tut gaya. Kaise ho gaya. So the guy who was selling the pankha said. Sir, aap ne poochha nahi. Kaise chala na ye alak type ka pankha hai. Pankhe ko seedha rakhna hai. Sar ko hila na padata hai. तो हर प्रोडक्ट लो हर एक्सपीरियंस लो जब कष्ट आता है तो फिर बाद में बोलेंगे कंडीशन सप्लाई सो वन ऑफ द बिग चैलेंजेस वी आर फेसिंग इन सोसाइटी टुडे इज बिकॉज ऑफ द इन्फ्लुएंस ऑफ द सोशल मीडिया द इंटरनेट द बम्बार्डमेंट द इंफॉर्मेशन ओवरलोड पीपल हैव अ टफ टाइम अंडरस्टैंडिंग वॉट इज माई प्रायोरिटी Without understanding your priority, you cannot focus. And if you cannot focus, you will be distracted by anything and everything. And therefore, the three big challenges which we are facing in this age is comparing, complaining and criticizing are the three cancers of the mind. And one of the challenges we face is when we compare, we are unable to do what we can also possibly do. And a lot of young people are confused because they are trying to become somebody else. And when they are trying to become somebody else, they are totally distracted. They are confused. And therefore, we have to first focus on what I can do and not look at what the world is doing. There was somebody who came to a village and said, I'll train you how to be an expert public speaker. So four or five hundred people registered. And this coach who was teaching people how to be public speaker, he began his coaching session by saying, the most important part of a speech is the beginning. You have to grip the audience and catch the audience's attention in the first sentence. That's the core of public speaking. And then he said, I'll give you an example how to begin your speech. And he said, the best years of my life were spent in the arms of a woman who was not my wife. Everybody gasped. Are Baba, ye kya bol raha hai? Scandal hai kya? And then he said, That woman was my mother. And everybody said, Oh wow, what a great way to begin the speech. So there was one villager in that audience. He went to his village and called his entire village and said, My public speaker ban gaya. Aajau. Mera lecture suno. So the whole village came up. He stood on his podium. 
and he thought let me try the same dialogue and he said the best years of my life were spent in the arms of a woman who was not my wife and he was so nervous he forgot the next line <laughs> and he tried to think and think and think and then he said and i can't remember who she was <laughs> and this is what happens if you try to be someone you are not meant to be in the mahabharat we have example of bhima bhima one day started complaining arjuna gets invited for all the cultural events because he is a great singer he is called for this event that event i am only called when you, you want me to beat somebody mere ko gunda bana diya hai i also want to attend all these sophisticated events be part of cultural programs just because i can't sing then you are thinking i'm like this only i will also become singer yudhishthir told him are you can't be singer baba don't compare with arjun no no i will be singer he said got the the best music teacher in indraprastha and he started training him bhima was sitting at the entrance of indraprastha shouting at the top of his lungs the whole indraprastha was shaking and people came and complained to yudhishthir are bhai ko samjhao bhai गा रहा है कि चीख रहा है युधिष्ठिर सेट कौन फीडबैक देगा उसको जो फीडबैक देने जाएगा पिट जाएगा सो समवन सेट टेल द्रौपदी टू गिव फीडबैक सो द्रौपदी के मैं सेट भीमा देखो संगीत गंधर्व विद्या है ऐसे बैठ के सबके सामने नहीं गाया जाता जंगल में जाओ पर्वतों में जाओ वहां बैठ के गाओ बहुत जल्दी सीख जाओगे भीमसेन टू कर एडवाइस सीरियसली चले गए पर्वत के ऊपर बैठ गए जोर जोर से चिल्लाते थे अचानक एक दिन एक गांव वाला आया झाड़ियों के पीठ से देखा भीम को देखा डर के भागा भीमसेन उसके पीछे पीछे भागे पकड़ा उसको ए, क्यों भाग रहे हो मुझे देख के तो वो बोलता है गांव वाला सर मैं यहाँ का धोबी हूं आपकी आवाज को सुनकर मुझे लगा मेरा जो गधा खो गया मिल गया मुझे that day bhima retired from singing so one of my friends visited a conference and when he visited the conference he was given a card the card had the name of this person and below the card was written educational qualification and it said phd bf to bole yaar ye kya hai phd bf so he said this means phd but fail बोले यार ऐसा अजीब तो अपन ने देखा ही नहीं ये क्या बोले नहीं आई नेवर वॉन्टेड टू बी पी एच डी माई फादर वॉन्टेड मी टू बी पी एच डी वाई बिकॉज टू ऑफ माई अदर कजन आर पी एच डी एंड देर फॉर आई ट्राइड बट अल्टीमेटली आई रियलाइज आई एम नॉट मैं टू बी पी एच डी आई ड्रॉप डाउट एंड देन दे सेड यू मस्ट अटेंड कॉन्फ्रेंसेज टू बी ऑनेस्ट मैंने कार्ड बनवाया जिसमें आके बी एफ डाल दिया लेकिन पता है क्या सबको लगता है ये बी एफ पी के आगे का डिग्री है सो मेनी टाइम्स वी आर फोर्स टू मेक डिसीजन आउट ऑफ कंपल्शन ऑफ सोशल प्रेजर नॉट बिकॉज आई वॉन्ट टू डू इट दे वॉन्ट मी टू डू इट दे वॉन्ट मी टू डू इट दे वॉन्ट मी टू डू इट कैन आई गेट सम फोकस ऑन वॉट आई कैन पोटेंशियली अकम्पलिश एंड डू can i be conscious of what i can contribute or i should live my entire life in perpetual confusion this confusion about my identity and what i can do is the major cause of people roaming around this world distracted not because they want to be distracted but because they are disinterested in what they are doing and unless there is absorption there cannot be focus unless there is attraction there cannot be absorption unless there is alignment there cannot be attraction and therefore it is very important for people to realize that i need alignment between my nature 
between what the world needs, between what can pay me. And that alignment is extremely important, otherwise we will just have a bunch of distracted people. And that distraction is the soil where all kinds of unnecessary habits grow. So this is a very, very crucial thing that comparison is a thief of joy. If we spend our entire life just comparing, 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 then we are left with practically nothing to contribute as a person and what we can actually do. So therefore we should take great inspiration from the Pandavas who were individuals in different domains. But they managed to stay united because they had a united cause. They had a common cause and they felt, yes, we can contribute to this. In Mumbai, there is a hotel called Hotel President. Unless you have money, you cannot enter there and you know pay for your bills. Right outside Hotel President, someone set up a thela and started selling samosa. Samosa ka dukan laga diya, thele pe. And he called it Hotel Vice President. And his marketing pitch was, if you can't afford the president, come to Vice President. So the focus is a very, very crucial element. Based on the focus, you will actually be able to align all of your energies, get attracted that what you are supposed to do and be absorbed in what you are doing. And that absorption is the only thing which can protect you from trying to seek pleasure in other things. A billion people across the world are addicted to cigarettes. Five million people die every year. But what is that meaning of that addiction? Because there is a pleasure-seeking tendency. Thousands of crores worth of drugs are smuggled into India every single day across the border, mainly to corrupt the youth. And there is a lure of what? Pleasure. That's why Patanjali says, memory of previous experience of pleasure is what is known as habit. So that is the first thing, focus. Remain focused so that nothing can distract you. Second is intention. That whatever activity we do, there can be four intentions which can inspire us. The first level of intention is fear. I do this because if I don't do, I will lose the job. If I don't do, people will criticize. That's called being motivated by fear. The second level is motivation caused by desire. I am doing this because I want to accomplish this, I want to do this, I will grow further, I will earn more and that desire sometimes becomes greed. Very famous or infamous stockbroker in the early 90s, I was in IIT at that time coming out and I had read it in newspaper when the scam broke out. So he came with a scheme by which he could make crores of rupees. And he caught hold of a friend of mine who was also connected to our temple and in the stock market. His name is, you know, Ashok Parikh, my friend's name. So this uh, stockbroker approaches Ashok Parikh and says, why don't we do this scheme together? So Ashok Parikh said, well, scheme is okay, but there seems to be some gray area which is not fully legal. He says, see, the way the interpretation of the law is, it can go either way. And we need to be willing to take the risk because we'll make as much money which seven generations can live off. So you have to take some risk. So Ashok Pari came to the temple and talked to one of our monks, who was also from a finance background, but now he's a monk and said, this is what it is. And if you allow me to do this, we'll make so much of money and I'll give part of that to the temple also. So he thought he'll get blessings for it. So my monk friend said, no, it's not going to work. Get out of it. So he tried to convince him, but he would not budge. So with great regret, he came back and said, 
to this stockbroker, I'm sorry, but I can't be partner with you in this. And he said, you know what you are walking out of? You're going to be getting so much, you're, you're absolutely lunatic. He says, no, what to do? So, well, he launched that scheme on his own, this stockbroker, did very well, made a lot of money, grew exponentially. And then in few months time, there was a crackdown, the scam broke out, he went to jail. This stockbroker's wife comes to Ashok Parikh and says, I want you to come to the jail and meet my husband. And when he goes and meets her husband who was in jail, she breaks down and she tells Ashok Parikh, as far as capability and talent and skill was concerned and ideas and genius is concerned, as far as financial acumen is concerned, there is no difference between my husband and you. But the major difference between my husband and you is my husband did not have that monk friend which you had. And that's how you got saved. So in the lure of more and more and more, there is no end to that desire and greed. And dear friends, after fear which comes in the mode of ignorance, as per the Gita, the intention by desire or greed comes in the mode of passion. Then we come to the mode of goodness, Sattvagun. So therefore, Sattva Gun basically is intention out of duty. I do this because it is my duty. And when I say duty, then Gita says, Karmanya Vadikaraste Ma Phaleshu Kadachana. I perform this activity because it is my duty. It is driven internally. It is not because of some external carrot which has been given. So that is the innate idea of Bharatiya Sanatan Dharma where everything was driven by the sense of duty. So when I was in temple in Chopati, I joined in 1993. So I had a friend of mine who also joined. He was from a village in interior Maharashtra. अच्छा छः साढ़े छः फुट का व्यक्ति था उसको वो भी ब्रह्मचारी बना तो उसको मेरे पास भेज दिया किचन में सेवा करने के लिए मेरी सेवा किचन में थी तो वो भी आ गया किचन में सेवा करने लगा तो मैंने उसको चपाती बनाने लगा दिया एक हफ्ते बाद मेरे पास आके बोलता है कि भाई आप समझे नहीं मैं कौन हूँ मैंने कहा कौन हो भाई बोले मैं अपने गाँव का सबसे बड़ा सनातन धर्म का प्रचारक हूँ और मैं जब खड़ा होकर लेक्चर देता हूं सनातन धर्म के ऊपर गीता के ऊपर पूरा गांव खड़ा हो जाता है मैं इस कौन में आया सनातन धर्म का लेक्चर देने प्रचार करने चपाती बनाने नहीं तो मैंने कहा यार मुझे क्यों बोल रहे हो मैं भी तो चपाती बना रहा हूं मुझे कंप्लेन करके क्या होगा बोले नहीं नहीं मैं बता रहा हूं कि आप टैलेंट नहीं पहचान रहे तो मैंने कहा भाई थोड़ा बहुत तो तपस्या करनी पड़ेगी अपना घर है क्या करें एक हफ्ते बाद फिर आया वही कंप्लेन किया धर्म का प्रचार करने आया हो चपाती बनाने नहीं तो ऐसा दो चार बार डायलॉग मारा एक एक महीने के बाद बोरिया बिस्तर लेके घर चला गया जाते जाते भी डायलॉग मार के गया धर्म का प्रचार करने आया चपाती बनाने नहीं दस साल बाद एक प्रोग्राम में मुझे मिला भागा भागा मेरे पास आया प्रोग्राम के बाद बोलता है मंदिर से निकलने के बाद शादी हुई शादी के बाद पत्नी को बैक पेन हो गया घर पर रोज चपाती मैं ही बनाता तो मैंने कहा रे थोड़ा रुक जाते तो अच्छा होता नहीं सो मेनी टाइम्स वी फील अरे आई कॉन्ट डू दिस इट्स टू बोरिंग इट्स नॉट एक्साइटिंग इनफ सो वॉट द इंटरनेट हैज डन इज कॉन्स्टेंटली एडिक्टेड अस टू अ डोपामाइन रश दैट अनलेस आई गेट एक्साइटेड विथ समथिंग आई के नॉट कंटिन्यू डूइंग इट बट कर्तव्य परायणता और ड्यूटीफुल एक्टिविटी वुड मीन दैट वी आर विलिंग टू गो थ्रू long periods of experiencing boredom because in my experience of 30 years i have realized the path to excellence is 
only possible by walking through and driving through the highways of boredom. Unless you are willing to go through and drive through the highways of boredom, you cannot reach the destination of excellence. And therefore, this is the third level duty. And the fourth level is what is known as love. Fear, desire, duty and love. Love means willingness to serve without selfish consideration. Pragada premere e sobhava achar nijadukka bighnadira no kore bichar In every relationship there is scarcity, impediment, discomfort, unhappiness. But still that relationship continues. That is known as love. And therefore love is all about willingness to go through pain to give pleasure to others. And therefore when one is inspired the feeling of love we are willing to serve others selflessly. So service without selfish consideration is love. What can give you the impetus to serve without selfishness when you know that by doing this I get something in the future which is of a great value in return. When you know that you will get something in the future then ये दुख और कष्ट सहन करने की क्षमता और शक्ति आएगी हम लोग के मंदिरों में जब प्रोग्राम होता है और हजारों की संख्या में लोग लाइन में खड़े रहते भंडारे में प्रसाद के लिए तीन चार हजार लोग खड़े हैं उनको चिंता लगी रहती कि भाई मुझे भोजन मिलेगा क्या कि मैं जब तक पहुंचूंगा खत्म ही ना हो जाए उससे ज्यादा चिंता लगी रहती है बांटने वाले को क्योंकि बांटने वाले को लगता है सबको बाट बांटने के बाद लास्ट में मैं खाऊंगा तो मेरे लिए कुछ बचेगा क्या तो उस चिंता के कारण वो कम मात्रा में बांटने लगता है और कम और कम और कम लोग लोग आके कंप्लेन करते हैं भाई समझा उसको सब्जी चटनी की तरह दे रहा है थोड़ा और देने बोलो तो उसके इन सिक्योरिटी को दूर करने के लिए एक ही उपाय होता है कि उसके लिए प्लेट बनाकर हम बगल में रख देते हैं सर्वर का प्लेट पहले ही बना के उसके बगल में रख देते हैं सर्विंग करते करते जब भी उसको लगता है कि मुझे खाना मिलेगा कि नहीं वो अपना प्लेट देख लेते हैं फिर लगता है कि सेवा करता रहूंगा तो भविष्य उज्जवल है उसके बाद इतना आत्मविश्वास आता है कि डबल डबल देने लगते और लोग कहते हैं भाई अपने लिए भी बचा ले और कहते हैं अरे सेवा ही तो परम धर्म है मैंने कहा यार इतना कॉन्फिडेंस कहां से आ गया फ्यूचर इज सिक्योर so when a child is crying in the middle of the night the mother doesn't get up and say i am not in night shift or the mother doesn't negotiate with the with her husband if i get up and take care of the child overtime milega kya no the feeling is that of love and therefore dear friends one of the core issues when it comes to habits is our habits will take the shape of the intentions we infuse our activities with. So therefore, the Gita is recommending that rather than having intentions by fear and desire, have intention inspired by duty or love. And that is exactly what the Gita is focused on. And so Arjuna on the battlefield of Kurukshetra was ready to fight and ready to kill Duryodhan. Suddenly he saw Bhishma, my grandfather. Suddenly he saw Drona, my teacher. And Arjuna got bewildered and he said, Krishna, I am bewildered about my identity. I don't know. My intention was to fight with Duryodhana. But now I am thinking I am the grandson and Bhishma is my grandfather. I should love my grandfather. Drona is my teacher. I must respect my teacher. So I am confused between my identities as a fighter, as a grandson and as a student. What should I do? And in that bewildered state, Arjuna's decision-making ability collapsed. Ve patushcha sari reme roma harshascha jayate Gandhi vasramshate hasta tvak chaiva paridahiyate His limbs started trembling. His bow and arrow started slipping from his hand. Arjuna knew what a fight is. Arjuna knew how to fight. But Arjuna forgot at that moment 
why to fight and therefore we will experience circumstances in life where we have the skill to fight but we will lose the will to fight and the Gita has been spoken to give all of us the will to fight because all of us will experience situations in life where we will become helpless but the Gita is saying you may become helpless in life but never become hopeless and that's the essence of what the Gita is trying to say. You may become helpless, but never become hopeless. You may become helpless, but never become hopeless. Focus, intention. Next is resilience. Resilience is the strength. And resilience goes down. If your mind is constantly consuming data from the internet for hours on end without the capacity in eating, you can eat 3, 4, 5 rotis. But if you start eating 50, 60 rotis a day, your body can't handle. It will collapse. Like that, the mind also has the maximum capacity of how much data it can handle in a day. The mind is a subtle body. It's part of your system. If you keep bombarding the mind, with unlimited data for hours and hours and hours, the mind is going through a major paralytic attack. The mind is an organ, the mind is a subtle body. It has a certain digestive capacity. Your stomach cannot handle 50 rotis every day. Your mind cannot handle beyond certain GB and TB of data. Yes, certain phone companies may be giving you unlimited data to use and consume. But that doesn't mean you have the ability to consume all of that data. And therefore, dear friends, the mind needs to become resilient. And for the mind to be resilient, you have to protect the mind from the attack of three factors. And what does Krishna say in the Gita? Trividham narakas yedam dwaram nashanam atmana kamam krodham tatha lobham tasmat etatrayam tyajet The three powerful forces are lust, anger and greed. And these make the mind flaky, brittle, vulnerable, susceptible, weak. And we need the mind to be resilient, to be supple, to be flexible, to be strong, to be able to bounce back. And therefore, anger is one letter short of danger. And the power of anger is such that it destroys the discrimination. And we react rather than respond to situations. I was in Yeravada jail in Pune. There were 500 prisoners in front of me. And I like jail programs. You know why? Because audience is guaranteed. Patsho kedi bade de mere samne. Mene lecture diya aur kaha koi prashna hai kya poochho. To ek kedi ne haath uta haan ji mera prashna hai. Mene kaha poochho. O kedi bolta hai, mai stage pe aake poochhoonga. Mene ghabar a gaya. Mene commissioner sahab ko poochha. Sir, ye stage pe a raha hai. Ye koon hai? Commissioner sahab bole, bara murder kiya hai usne. So I said, I'm going to be 13th. Why does he want to come? He said, let him come. So he came and asked the question and then I gave the answer. Then I asked him, at such a young age, how could you commit so many crimes? Did you not realize what you're doing? And he said, when the storm of anger overwhelms and overcomes me, there is a blackout in front of my intelligence. I cannot see anything. I cannot understand anything. And I have become completely susceptible to this anger. But here in the jail, because every prisoner has to do some task as part of their jail duties, I was asked to translate books into the Braille language for the blind. And with the Lord's arrangement, the latest book I am translating into Braille for the blind is Bhagavad Gita as it is by Srila Prabhupada. And in the jail, he started a satsang program on a regular basis 
where our devotees were going, teaching, sharing, and so many prisoners' lives transformed. But the point is, do not underestimate the power and influence of anger. That also becomes a habit. People just fly off in a tangent, rage. I was giving a lecture in MIT in Boston, Massachusetts Institute of Technology. This was 2006. It was just my second trip to US for giving Bhagavad Gita tours. I was very excited, MIT. Oh, I thought, oh, IIT ka bada bhai. It was a full house. There was an LCD projector. I had given my presentation. And I was ready to start. I was standing on the podium. I said, okay, switch on. And the guy was fidgeting with the LCD and came up and said, whispered in my ear, Sir, LCD projector is not working. You please depend on Krishna and give your lecture. And I could not speak anything back to him because the topic of my lecture was overcoming anger. And the first slide was things will not always go the way you expect. How many of you have that experience that things do not go the way you expect? So Krishna says to Arjuna in Gita, the definition of stress, the definition of stress and anxiety is the gap between expectation and reality. The gap between expectation and reality creates stress. But then when there is stress, there is always going to be episodes where you do not actually experience the way you expect. But you have to move forward with resilience. And therefore, Srimad Bhagavatam says, Desha kalartha yuktani hirtatapa upashamani cha haranti prasabam chittam govind abitani me. When Arjuna saw that Krishna has ended his pastimes and he is all alone, he became completely overwhelmed with grief and he was thinking, well, how will I survive? And he could not have Krishna's association to guide him on what to do in this situation. But at that moment, he remembered the words of Krishna spoken before and that gave him the strength. The words of wisdom help us when we are in such difficult situations. And what does the words of wisdom do? They help us change the perspective. Beautiful flower. I am looking, looking at it with my naked eyes. It looks beautiful. You are looking at it. It looks beautiful. But if I look at the same flower with a microscope, high power microscope, then the same flower will look ugly. Why? What has changed? Has the flower changed? No. My magnification has changed. I am magnifying this flower more than it is required. An incident has happened. An issue has occurred. And you are disappointed. That's fine. But after that what happens is what creates the problem. You start magnifying that whole episode and keep replaying it within your mind again and again. Overthinking. My most popular reel so far, which went for to more than 32, 33 million, is on overthinking. I never imagined it will become so popular. It, it, it became so popular because of oversharing. But people were sharing because they realized overthinking is a problem. Overthinking is nothing but magnifying a situation more than it is required. So therefore, spiritual wisdom exists to help us look at situations with the right perspective. In certain situations, 
you need things to come closer to have a look certain situations you need to things to be distant and far and in certain situations at the right distance and therefore spirituality teaches us gives us the discrimination the ability to pick up the right lens at the right moment to view a certain situation not magnify it not keep it at a distant but what that situation needs the ability to take out the dame buddhi yogam tam ye namam upayantite and that's what gives you the strength and the ability the resilience i was going for a program in iit kharagpur which is 3 hours away from kolkata airport i was traveling with two friends from america we landed in kolkata airport we came out and when we came out we were welcomed with garlands and then the organizer said you know it is bangal band so i said oh bangal band bangal band means vehicle will not move 3 ghante ka fasla kaise karenge bangal band mein no car so therefore program is cancelled they said nahi program chalu hai humne kare program kaise chalu hai hum kaise jayenge 3 ghanta kaise chalayenge wo bole hum ambulance mein lene aaye ek ambulance ja rahi thi usi mein aapko bhi pick up kare तो एम्बुलेंस में मैं चढ़ने लगा तो मेरे दो अमेरिकी मित्र पूछते हैं व्हाई आर वी एंटरिंग एम्बुलेंस आई सेड वेरी डिफिकल्ट टू एक्सप्लेन बिकॉज फर्स्ट आई हैव टू एक्सप्लेन व्हाट इज बंद दैट इट सेल्फ विल टेक हाफ एन आवर सो बेटर यू गो इन द बैक आई विल सिट इन फ्रंट आई विल मैनेज समबडी स्टॉप डस इन द मिडल एंड सेड हम देखना चाहते हैं पीछे कौन है तो मैंने कहा देख लो तो पीछे मेरे दोनों अमेरिकन मित्र ब्रेकफास्ट खा के गले में तो हार था ही आराम से लेटे हुए थे ये आदमी अंदर देख के बोलता है इनकी आत्मा को शांति मिले तीन घंटे के अंदर हम पहुंच गए सो सिचुएशन एज अकर्ड यू आर हेल्पलेस बट इन स्पाइट ऑफ बीइंग हेल्पलेस इफ यू डू नॉट बिकम होपलेस एंड कंटिन्यू many roads open up and in lehman brothers collapse happened in 2007 after that the global economy came down but indian economy was going up and one american professor wrote why indian economy is going why is it growing so much he said jugad there is a resilience and jugad is a non translatable word you have to be indian to understand dusri bhasha mein nahi samajh samjha sakte usko You can't say it is innovation. वो भी नहीं है जुगाड़ ये शब्द से सब समझ गए सो देर फॉर कृष्णा अपियर टू वसुदेव एंड देव की आफ्टर सिक्स सन्स वेर किल्ड पीपल गो टू टेम्पल एंड सेलिब्रेट जन्माष्टमी विद ग्रेट फैन फेयर एंड ग्रेट जॉय बट बिहाइंड दैट जॉय इज द अनलिमिटेड टीयर्स ऑफ वसुदेव एंड देव की फॉर लूजिंग सिक्स सन्स टू लूज वन सन इज ट्रोमैटिक वॉट टू स्पीक ऑफ लूजिंग सिक्स सन्स they lost six sons but what makes vasudev strong is he was hopeful that krishna will appear and therefore vasudev is described as tatascha shauri bhagavat prachodita sutam samadaya cha sutika grihat shauri means the brave one so at that moment why is vasudev called shauri shauri means brave so brave doesn't mean one who conquers others and defeats others but one who will never lose hope even in the most helpless situation i was giving a lecture in iit janmashtami lecture i said vasudev devaki were put in jail by kamsa six sons were killed then krishna appeared and all of that you know kans ne akashvani suni तो लेक्चर के बाद एक स्टूडेंट आके मेरे बोलता है अरे क्या प्रभु जी आपने ऐसा लेक्चर दिया वसुदेव देव की ये वो अरे कम से अगर वसुदेव को एक जेल में रखता और देवकी को दूसरे जेल में रखता तो एक भी बच्चा पैदा नहीं तो आठवां पुत्र तो होता ही नहीं तो इतना सब ड्रामा करने की क्या जरूरत थी अलग अलग रख देता तो खत्म इतना भी आइडिया चमका नहीं क्या कम्स को मैंने कहा क्या करे कम्स तेरे जैसा आई नहीं गया था but vasudev had that resilience that hope so 
The four things I am discussing, first focus, second intention, third resilience and the last is empathy. No empathy, no forgiveness, no forgiveness, no relationship, no relationship, no family. I was giving lecture in, uh, you know, US in a university. So many people came for that lecture. And one student came up to me and started speaking to me in Hindi. American boy. I said, you are American, how are you Hindi? So he said, what do I do when I was 17 years old, I told my father that you have given everything to me, I have given a big car, a golf course, a tennis court, but what is the family? I have not given his experience. Because when I was 2 years old, you were divorced. Today, a country like Luxembourg, has eight million people, and you are divorced. Today a country like Luxembourg has 88% divorce rate, Spain has 65% divorce rate, France has 55% divorce rate, Russia has 51% divorce rate, US has 46% divorce rate, the global divorce rate is 44% and India still has the lowest divorce rate at only 1% so far. His father told him take a flight to India, he came to India, went to Varanasi, saw paying guests available, he went to that house and said, मुझे रख लीजिए आप दो साल के लिए परिवार के लोगों के बीच आदान प्रदान देखना चाहता हूँ फेस्टिवल आप लोग मनाएंगे स्नेह क्या होता है आप लोग बैठ के कैसे खाते हैं बस इतना ही मैं जानना चाहता हूँ दो साल के लिए मुझे रख लो पेइंग गेस्ट पारिवारिक सुख क्या है अनुभव करने अगर दो साल रखोगे तो हर महीना एक लाख रुपये रेंटल दूंगा वो फैमिली बोले दो साल क्यों जिंदगी भर रहो और बोले आपके दूसरे भी फ्रेंड्स होंगे जिनको परिवार अनुभव करना होगा उनको भी बुला लेते सो गोल्डमैन सैक्स केम विथ रिपोर्ट दैट बिटवीन 2015 एंड 2025 द इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर इन्वेस्टमेंट रिक्वायर्ड इन इंडिया वुड बी 1.4 ट्रिलियन डॉलर्स बट आउट ऑफ दैट 800 बिलियन डॉलर्स वुड कम आउट ऑफ फैमिली सेविंग्स फैमिली विल नॉट सेव अनलेस देर इज फीलिंग इन द फैमिली and for that feeling to happen there has to be empathy there has to be emotional exchange there has to be willingness to forgive there has to be tolerance the american gdp has grown by a certain amount but five times more than that amount is the rate at which social security has grown expenses and therefore just because of having family values and culture we are so protected and so safe and therefore, dear friends, I want to thank Sri Ram College and the Delhi Literature Festival for inviting me here to speak on the art of habits. And I want to just underscore, if you want to transform your habits, work on your focus, work on your intention, work on your resilience, work on being more empathetic. And auspicious positive habits will simply follow and you will become a master of discipline because discipline is a fusion of intention with action and forgiveness is to call off the war on reality. Thank you all very much.